guys have done a lot of graphing for me. A lot of graphing, and we're still gonna do that. But now I really wanna work on, if I give you a graph or some information, can you guys now produce the equation? All right, can you produce the equation for me? Just give me, let me give you some basics first before we hop right into this. Here's what every equation will look like. It'll have an A value out in front. Do you know how to find the A value? From yesterday's quiz, how do I find the A value? Okay, max minus min divided by two. And then it'll either be sine or cosine depending on what it's given or what the graph looks like. All right, and this is right up here. I'm just copying this over for you. And then there will be a B value, we, as we know as the frequency. I don't have a formula to find B, but what formula have we been using that contains B? Period equals? Okay, so we're gonna be using period equals two pi over B to find the B value. All right, that's how we're gonna be finding B. And then we just put an X with it. And then on the outside, we're gonna have our C value. And how do we find C? Max plus the min divided by two. Then we're gonna take A, B, C, plug it in, and write this beautiful equation every time, okay? Uh, just a little reminder here. C value I've been calling the shift, which it is. You may see it also referred to as the midline, the line that cuts the max and min in half, all right, called the midline, but it's also the shift. And the other thing I need to go over that's pretty important for today, I know period is two pi divided by B, but anybody remember the definition of period? Look at that, huh? How long for one cycle? <coughs> Man, are you gonna make it? I'm nervous about you. You gonna be all right? Yeah. I feel like I gotta get some disinfectant wipes and wipe myself down after. All right, sorry I even brought it up. Let's go, moving on. Because it's like, oh, remember, remember in sixth grade when I was sick for two days and everyone tells their life story and nobody cares, all right? It was just like I was walking down the hall today before homeroom and there was this, I don't know what grade they were in, but two kids walking down and the one kid was like, after school today, I gotta get a flu shot, then go to the dentist. And I could just, I wanted to say, do you think this kid next to you really cares? Nobody cares at all, all right? Nobody cares, all right? Your life's not that important, nobody cares. All right, anyway. All right, very, very basic right now, number one, very basic. It's a sine curve, sine function. I'm telling you the amplitude is three, frequency four, shift five. So I've given you every single value. Just put it all together for me and write this equation. All right, you do not have to find any A, B, or C value. I have given all three of them to you. I'm just asking for you guys to write the equation now. So always start it out with y equals, because it's not an equation unless it has an equal sign. What else do you want to put with it now? Here we go, seven. What's the amplitude? Garbage. The first one of the day. I just want once. Ten. Ready? Y equals amplitude. Three. What kind of curve is this? Sine. What's my frequency? 4x in parentheses, and then the shift, plus 5. Yep, because it's going up 5. Very basic. All right, now we're going to get to the point where I don't give you all the values. you got to try to find a couple on your own. Anything you want to ask before we do that? <coughs> all right, here we go. Determine the amplitude, the period, and the frequency, then write the equation. All right, let's go amplitude, A value. We know what the equation to find the A value is. Max minus min over two. All right, somebody tell me what the max and the min are here. Number one, what's the max and the min? Thank you. You know what I got fifth period? 10 and negative 10. It's 1.0 there, okay. Yep, so one minus negative one divided by two. What's my amplitude? One. We're all good there. Period. You're not gonna, what's period mean again? How long it takes to make? 
One cycle. Well, this isn't one cycle, right? This is what? Half a cycle. And it took two pi to get to half a cycle. So if I continued it, how long would it take to get a full cycle? Four pi. So the period is four pi. Questions about that one? That's how long it's going to take to make a full cycle. Because I see half of it right now. Next up, use the period to find the frequency. 4 pi equals, what's the formula? 2 pi over B. Period equals 2 pi over frequency. How are you guys solving that? This will be the last time I solve it with you. Cross multiply, so you get 4 pi B equals 2 pi. All right, divide both sides by 4 pi. Pi's cancel out. What's the B value? One half. <coughs> Put the two together now, or three together. Uh, actually, never mind. I'll, I'll talk about that at the end. Y equals. If you want to put the one there, it makes you feel warm inside. Go ahead, put the one there. One. Ooh, how'd you know it was a cosine curve? I didn't say that. Nice. Cosine. What's in parentheses here? One half x. Ooh, I need to figure out what c value if there's a shift. So uh, let me go over here now. Shift. You guys already told me the max was one plus. The minimum, negative 1 divided by 2. What do you see about the C value? 1 plus negative 1 divided by 2? 0. So what's that telling me? There is no shift. If you want to put plus 0 at the end, feel free. But there's our equation. So I got A, period, frequency, C value, equation. How's everyone feeling, all right? Yeah, you just want more. You're hungry. Let's go. <coughs> Cosine amp is 2, period 3 pi, shift down 1. What's the only value I don't have? Yeah, I don't have B yet. I got A. I got the C. I don't have the B value. 3 pi equals 2 pi over B. Help me cross multiply. Nine, help me cross multiply here. What do you want to divide both sides by? Yeah. Pies cancel out. What's my value? Still you. Keep, keep trucking. Equation now. We knew everything now. Two, equation. How'd you know it was a cosine? Oh, don't be silly. Cosine. Thought I was going to get you. Y minus. Down. Yes! Questions? Seems pretty easy. Yeah? Oh, okay. We'll see. All right. Amplitude, period, and frequency before we write the equation. Okay. A value. Uh, 16. Got a max for me? Two. Got a minus. Got the minimum? Minus negative 2 divided by 2. 2. 4 divided by 2, 2. Are you guys seeing, I don't know, this is the second time this happened when it goes up and down to the same number? That's the amplitude. A little something there for you, Ian. All right. Good talk. What's the period here? How long does it take to make one cycle? One cycle here. 
here you go. Here's how I, I always start at zero. And I start tracing it until it starts repeating. So you tell me when to stop when it starts repeating again. Good, 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 good. Oh, there you go. Good. How Now, how long did that take me on the x-axis to what? Pi. There's the period. Nice. And now find the frequency using the period. Pi equals 2 pi over b. Oh, 17, B value? Is that a question or an answer to my question? <coughs> Be confident. Good job. Nice job. Two. Be confident. Now write the equation. Who's helping me on the equation here? 17, helping me on the equation. Confidence. Let's try it out. Ready? How'd you know? Ooh, how'd you know a sign? <laughs> Where does it start? Done. That's all you needed to say, right? Starts at zero. So two sign, continue, young one. Yeah. And we don't need to find it, but if it goes up and down to the same number, there's no shift. Okay, there's no shift. All right, if it went up to six and down to negative three, then there's a shift. But since it goes up to two and negative two, no shift. Can you guys write the equation in number five for me before I answer part A and part B with you? Find the equation in number five. Seventeen, three in a row. This is historic, JT. Great job. Everyone else in agreement? What is the maximum value of this function? How high will it go up? And be able to back yourself up. How high is this one going up? 14. Why do you say 3? And goes to where? Going on. Yep. Okay, Mike. Right? What's your max? Everyone, are we good now? All right. You just got a little rattled there. You just started like. We went from three to six. It's all right. Everything, everyone thinks it's funny now, Mike, until we answer part B, all right, which is a little bit tougher. Where on the x-axis, that's what this is asking, where in radians, where on the x-axis does it hit for? Oh, oh. Where is this graph going to hit for on the x-axis? Ready? You t ready? It's the sine curve. Where does sine start? It's going to start at, and I'll, I'll just do the sketch. You don't have to. It's going to start at zero, right? 
And then where's sine travel to? It's ding, 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 it's max. So I need to find out what this first point is. What is that point on the x-axis? It's not pi over 2. Anybody remember we did two days worth of this, how I figure out what the x-axis goes by. Key values, go, here we go. How do I find out what the key value is? I take the, the what and divide by 4. What do I divide by four? Period, yeah. Can you guys find the period of this curve right here? Because I didn't give it to you. Using the frequency, find the period of that curve. Two pi divided by a half. When you guys skip and flip and multiply. Uh, when you're ready, one, what's the period? It is four pi. Nice job. So I'm going to take four pi divided by four. There's a key value everywhere. Every pi. So what's this first value then? Pi. So hit its max at pi. Just so I know we get this, I'm going to change this question right now. So you don't have to write it down. Just tell me. Where would the minimum be on the x-axis? If the max is at pi, where would that minimum occur? Where would this minimum occur right here? <coughs> 3 pi. Why? What, where is it? What's this one? 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. Yep. Okay, so the minimum would be at 3 pi. You guys all good? Where does this graph go from 0 to 2? Hmm. All right, well... Quick, I just want to see, visualize this, ready? Where's this sine curve going to start? It's going to go to zero, right? And then it's going to go to its max. What's its max? What's the max value here? There's no shift. Two, right? What's the question asking? When it goes from zero to two, right? So I need to find out over what interval from zero, from, from, we already know it's from zero to something, right? So zero x to something. we got to find out what that something is. How do I find that again? Key values. Got to know the what to find the key value. Period. Go ahead, find the period. Should look pretty familiar. What are you going to do? 2 pi divided by 1 half. Doesn't this look pretty familiar? What was the period now? 4 pi, so a key value is going to be 4 pi divided by 4, so it'll be at pi. So from 0 to <coughs> pi, it's going to go from 0 to 2. What about from, and I just want to change this up, what about 2 to 0? What interval would it be from 2 to 0? Pi to 2 pi would go back to go back to zero you and your group I'm kind of done talking for now you and your group see if you can come up with the equation for seven you and your group come up with the equation for seven
who's got this one? 13. Ready to go? Go ahead. Two cosine. Okay, let me just quickly check the frequency here. The period was 3 pi, so you set that equal to 2 pi divided by b. Right? Okay, you cross multiply. 3 pi b equals 2 pi. Divide both sides by 3 pi. b equals 2 thirds. Nice job. There is one thing, though, you are missing. reflected in the x-axis. How did I, what was always on a graph that told me it flipped over the x-axis? Rachel? Negative out in front, yes. All right. Everyone all right, why we had to have the negative? You good back there, superstar? Good? Okay, just checking. I get nervous when I don't hear from you for a class period. This kid. All right, I'll help you graph. You get me the equation though. You and your group, give me the equation. If the max height is 14, the minimum height is six. Find A, find B, find C, write the equation. Let's roll. Find A, B, and C, and then write the equation for me. I'll give you two minutes. Well, the last mow of the season, huh? Anybody want to fill me in on what a Bulbasaur is or a Squirtle? They're Pokemon characters. Same thing as a Charmander. Uh, every Wednesday, I interview one of my uh, freshmen in my freshman classes, and they're allowed to submit questions to ask, and this one is Bulbasaur, Shamander, or Squirtle? Question mark. Would you rather rip off 20 Band-Aids or one Band-Aid that was the size of 20? Mind, heart, or gut? Gut. Mind, heart, or gut? If you were a pizza delivery person, how would you benefit from scissors? Why is a tennis ball fuzzy? This is what I got in class. So dumb. If you had to choose a bone to break, which one would it be? Hmm. 
some interesting ones. What would the name of your debut album be? Okay. I think we'll just stick to what elementary school you went to and what you're planning to do in college. Hakan, you're up today. Elementary school? Albany? Nice. When did you finally come here? Sixth grade, nice. Uh, what are you planning on studying? Or do you have a, no idea? Any interests? Art. Type of art? Like kids' book illustration, like type stuff? Nice. I, I envy people who are artistic because I do not have an artistic bone in my body. Let's just put it this way. High school, I needed an art credit to graduate. So I took woodworking. And uh, the first thing we made was a pencil holder. Like we just put the pencils in and they stick up like that. And let's just say you put a pencil through mine, it would just go right through. Because I just drilled a hole right through it. And that's my uh, handy ability. Yep. It took me most of the year to make the clock that most kids took only about a, a month or two to make. So. The uh, extent of my artistic ability goes right here. Symmetrical hot dog stand? Anybody? Symmetrical hot dog stand? The shingles on the roof? Anybody? That's where you go to place your order and get your hot dog? You know? Okay, fine. All right, sorry. I told you that's about as much as you're going to get from me. That and a cube, that's about it. All right. All right, going back, A value. How'd you find it first? A value, six, how'd you find your A value? And that A value was four. C value, let me skip over B. C value, how'd you find it? Two, how'd you find your C value? So 14 divided by two, what's your C value? 10. All right, how did you find the B value now? Uh, let's hear from eight, how'd you find the B value? 12 equals two pi over B, you cross multiplied and got B to be equal to? Pi over six, nice job. So let's put this all together and write the equation before we graph it. Y equals four, what was our curve? Cosine pi over 6x plus 10. Wow, that looks pretty hardcore. You're about to do some hardcore graphing, huh? Feel good about yourself? Everyone all right about the equation? OK, go ahead. Set up your x and y axes right now if you haven't done so. We're going to graph this equation now. As you set up your x and y axes, remember, it's got to go at least up to 16, right? That was my maximum value. 14, excuse me, 14. It's got to go at least up to 14. How do you find what your x-axis goes by? 
what have we been doing all day today? Take the period of 12 and divide it by 4, yep. So our key values are going to go by 3s. Uh, hold on, though. Hold on there. Read the last part of the directions. Two cycles. Yeah, don't space them out that much. We got to go two cycles. All right, who's helping me here? Uh, three, need a little help on the x-axis. What's my first point on the x-axis? Three, keep going. Six, nine. Well, there's one cycle. Fifteen, kid can go by threes like nobody's business. Keep going. Eighteen, uh-oh, big numbers. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't need a 27 because okay. right. two cycles, right? Yep. <laughs> okay, can you guys, in all seriousness, tell me where we are here as a class? Do we still want to graph the pre shift or can we do pre shift, then add 10 to it and just be done with one graph? Do we still want to do pre shift? I don't know where we are in here. Can we try one without the pre-shift or without the pre-shift? All right. So where's cosine start? You know, zero. Starts at its max. Where would the max be? Usually it's at four, but I add 10 to it. So the max will be at 14. Where's cosine go from here? Down to its zero, but I'm adding 10. So now at three, it'll be at? 10, then it goes to its minimum, which we've already been told is six. So at six, it'll be six. Then it goes to where? It goes to zero, but I'm adding 10, so back to 10, and ends at its <coughs> max. And then I gotta do one more cycle of that. Almost took a tumble there, right? <laughs> that would have been embarrassing. <laughs> Questions? Uh, that's a question I, I asked for it, right? Okay. Nothing wrong with the pair of specs. Nothing wrong. Anybody wear contacts? No, I wear them. I have contacts, yeah. I wear glasses to bed. That's about it. Or maybe around town on a, or or maybe around town on a lazy Sunday. I'll wear them one day. No. No. Casual Friday. All right, we all good here. Uh, before we do this problem, I just need one other point at zero. Can you add, can you go zero eight to finish this graph off for me? Okay, thank you. All I want is the A, B, and I, I don't know why they did this. They put D in here instead of C, but so find the A, B, and D value now. All right, nothing's changing. Nothing's changing. How do I find the A value? Uh, here we go, 12, how do I find the A value? Oh. Hi. <laughs> what do you got for the max, Liz? Eight, Eight minus the minimum? Five. Five over two. That A value or the amplitude will be? Three over two. Also known as, you can put three <laughs> over two, sure. 
You can put 1.5 if you want, whatever you're feeling. All right, I'll skip over B because that's the toughest, so I'll save it to last. What about the D value here, AKA the C value, usually known as 13? How do you find the C value or the D in this case? So 8 plus 5 over 2. I'll go decimal on you guys here, 6.5. What am I going to need to find B? The period, right? All right, you tell me how long on the x-axis before this bad boy repeats itself. To everyone, 12 units? Yep. So 12 equals 2 pi divided by B. And the B value, 13 again, B value. Nice job. And it doesn't say to write the equation, right? So that's it. A, D, B. Oh, no, 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 no. I still got five minutes. We could still at least get two more in. Let's go number five on the homework. Five on the homework. Here's the max point. Here's the minimum point. Can you find the equation? Ooh, midline. What did we talk about at the beginning of class? Midline's the same as what value? C value, the shift. And can you find the amplitude for me? <coughs> Given the, the max and the min points, I'll be interested to see what you do here. All right, uh, eight, you get a choice here. What do you want to find, midline or amplitude? Okay, the C value. And I do what, max divided by two? Okay. Here was my max point, but which one do I want to use? Remember, how high it goes, right, how high it goes. So I want the 68, the Y coordinates, yes. Plus, look at the minimum now to two. So your C value, 35. How about the A value? 10, little help with the A value. Yep, 33. And that's all I needed to find for part A. Okay. Now the period's one, it's a sine curve, write the equation. The period is one, not the frequency, the period is one. I already, you already have A and C, so all you have to do is find B now. What are you finding for the B value? 18. What'd you have? Five? You got one equals two pi over B, right? What are you doing now? You went from five to two pi in a matter of six seconds. Where did that five come from? Mike goes from what, three to six to four, and now one, and we go five to two pi. I don't know. Three, finish this with the equation. So positive and uplifting. <laughs> Mrs. Motivation, yep, 33. Sure. All right. Nice job today, guys. Nice job.